When I was in grad school, I took a set theory class where we learned about the set theoretic framework of arithmetic. And well, I thought I'd revisit some of those ideas for some videos, and this is the third of those videos. So previously, we looked at how the natural numbers were defined axiomatically along with addition of two natural numbers. And then we also looked at a set theoretic model of natural numbers. And today we're going to look at multiplication. But before we do that, let's recall something real quick. So the natural numbers, which we'll denote by n, is uniquely determined by the following setup. And what I really mean by uniquely determined is that if something else has this setup, then it's essentially the same as the natural numbers. Okay, so zero is an element of n, and then we've got an injective function s from n to n, so that the image of s is equal to all of n except for zero. But then from that, with a little bit of work, you can show that n is simply equal to zero, and then s of zero, and then s of s of zero, and so on and so forth. But then we can rename these things like s of zero, s of s of zero, one, two, so on and so forth, so that n is equal to zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9. Okay, so then, well, how do we really want to think about this function s? Well, it's the so-called successor function. So we'd like to think that s of n is equal to n plus 1. And now that we have that set up, we can recursively define addition between any two natural numbers. And we'll do that by saying that m plus 0 is equal to m. And then m plus s of n is equal to s of m plus n. And like I said, we did this in a previous video, and we in fact showed that addition was commutative and associative based off of this setup. And now we'd like to look at the following question, and that question is, well, what about multiplication? So in order to get off the ground, let's see some things that we would need to make sense for multiplication to be f defined correctly. And maybe the first thing that we would need is that m times 0 would be equal to 0 times m, which would be equal to 0. And this should hold for all natural numbers m. So I think that's pretty clear. And then, well, what are some other things? Well, we'd want commutativity of multiplication and associativity of multiplication. I won't write those down. Those will follow from the definition that we would build. And we would also want something like the distributive rule. But let's think about the simplest version of the distributive rule. And that would be m times n plus 1 is equal to m times n plus m. Oh, but now that we've got that, along with our idea of a successor function, that gives us our recursive method for defining multiplication of two natural numbers. So I'll just say, let's define multiplication, which I'll denote by this dot, of two natural numbers giving us a new natural number by, so two different rules. So, well, whenever you have a recursive setup, you need to define the seeds. And the first seed, or the only seed, will be m times 0 is equal to 0 for all natural numbers m. And then from there, we'll define m times the successor of n to be equal to m times n plus m. So notice that this successor language is putting like a more careful way of defining this simplest version of the distributive rule, keeping in mind that really at the heart of it, inside the natural numbers, we're working with this successor function. We're not working with plus. Although we will like sloppily move back and forth between the two. Okay, so this is what we'll take to be our defining property or defining setup of multiplication within natural numbers. Now we'd like to show that it satisfies all the rules that we want it to. 
That being said, before we do that, let's work out a bit of an example calculation just to make sure it's making sense from the start. So let's look at four times three. So obviously we should get 12 for that, but observe that that's the same thing as four times the successor of two, because three is equal to the successor of two. But now using our recursive rule, that's the same thing as four times two plus four. But now we could write that as four times the successor of one plus four, given the fact that two is equal to the successor of one. And now we could just like keep using this rule over and over and over until we encounter this first rule. So let's see, that's gonna give us four times one plus four plus four. Where in this step, I spread this four times the successor of one into those two. Okay, but now where could we go from here? Well, we could write this successor of, or this one as the successor of zero. And then maybe while I'm at it, I'll add four plus four and get eight. Just keeping in mind that we already know from the previous video that addition works the way that we want it to. Okay, so now let's apply our recursion to this uh, line right here. And that'll give us four times zero plus four plus eight. Oh, but four times zero is equal to zero by this assumption. So we're left with four plus eight, which is equal to 12. Okay, so there we have it. Following from the start to the end, we see that using this definition, we at least in this case, get the answer that we want. Okay, so now let's prove that this definition of multiplication has all of the properties that we want. So the first couple properties we'll prove are that zero times n is always equal to zero and one times n is always equal to n. You might say, well, we already have this from our definition of multiplication, but in fact, we don't. We have that if you right multiply by zero, you get zero. We're gonna show that if you left multiply by zero, you get zero. Okay, so let's start with this zero multiplication and we'll prove this with induction. So our base case, well, that'll be the case when n is equal to zero. But notice if n is equal to zero, we get zero times zero, which is equal to zero from our assumption over here inside of the definition. And now let's do our induction step. So now we'll suppose for some natural number k bigger than or equal to zero, we have, well, we have the thing working. So in other words, zero times k is equal to zero. And then we want to observe, so maybe we'll say and observe that if we take zero times k plus one, well, hopefully we'll get zero Using our recursive definition for multiplication, notice I've used k plus one here. So I'm like going back to the standard notation for induction, but we'll move between that and the successor function as needed. Okay, so this is simply equal to zero times the successor of k. Oh, but then by this recursive definition over here, this is zero times k plus zero, but that's zero plus zero, which is equal to zero. So that does it for the yellow boxed thing, the left multiplication by zero. Now let's move on to the left multiplication by one. And we're gonna again do this by induction, starting with n is equal to zero, but notice if n is equal to zero, we have one times zero is equal to zero, which is what we need. Okay. So now let's make our induction step. So now let's suppose for some k bigger than or equal to zero, we have everything working out. So in other words, one times k is equal to k, and then observe that the following calculation finishes it off. So one times k plus one is equal to one times the successor of k, but by our recursive definition, 
that's equal to one times k plus one, but one times k is equal to k, so that's simply equal to k plus one as needed. Okay, so let's see what our next result is. So I've gathered our results so far over here, so just keep those in mind. Now we're gonna move on to our next little result, which is one of the distributive rules. So we'll show for all natural numbers L, M, and N that L plus M times N is L is L N plus M N. And we're gonna do this by induction on N. So we'll start again like we did before with N is equal to zero. So let's look at this, L plus M times zero. So that's equal to zero by our recursive setup of multiplication but then zero is equal to zero plus zero. That follows from stuff that we did when we defined carefully addition, but now that's equal to L times zero plus M times zero. But check it out, that's exactly what we need here. Okay, so now we'll make our induction step. So now suppose for some K bigger than or equal to zero, we have this working out. So in other words, L plus M times k is lk plus mk. And then we'll consider the next case. So we'll just say, and observe that l plus m times k plus one. So we'd like this to distribute the correct way. So let's put this back into the language, language of the successor function. This is l plus m times the successor of k. But now using our rule over here, that's gonna be equal to L plus M times K plus L plus M. But now we can apply our induction hypothesis to do the distribution right here on this first term. So that'll give us LK plus MK plus L plus M. Where here I've removed parentheses because we know that addition is associative from the previous video, so uh, this isn't uh, really an issue. Okay, so now let's move some stuff together. We'll move this LK and this L together, and then we'll move this MK and this M together. That'll give us LK plus L, and then plus, let's see, MK plus M. And then I'm gonna rewrite L as L times one and M as M times one, and then factor an L out and an M out. Or actually just observe that this is equal to L times the successor of K, and this is equal to M times the successor of K by this rule over here. But then the successor of K is K plus one, so that's L times K plus one plus M times K plus one as needed to finish this thing off. So this is maybe one type of a distributive rule. The other type would involve putting the addition on the right, which I'll leave as a homework exercise. Okay, so now let's move on. So now we're getting into the commutativity of multiplication. In other words, for all natural numbers M and N, M times N is N times M. And let's recall, we've got these over here as a tool. I've included this other type of distributive rule. I don't think we're gonna need it here, but this could be set as a homework exercise as well. So we prove the one that I don't have boxed in purple, and then the one that's boxed in purple follows very similarly. So how are we gonna do this? Well, it shouldn't be too much of a surprise that we're gonna do this by induction on N. So let's start with the n equals zero case, and let's notice that m times zero is equal to zero by our definition right here inside of multiplication, but then that in turn is equal to zero times m from this thing that we started out proving before. Okay, so now let's make our induction step. So now let's suppose for some k bigger than or equal to zero, we have everything working out. In other words, mk is equal to km, and then let's observe that the following calculation finishes it all off. So we're gonna look at m times k plus one, 
which is simply equal to m times the successor of k, which by our definition over here is equal to m times k plus m. But then that's the same thing as k times m plus 1 times m, where here I changed m times k to k times m by our induction hypothesis. And then I changed m to 1 times m by, well, this thing that we proved before. But now I can apply our distributive rule right here that we previously proved to write this as k plus 1 times m as needed. Okay, so there we have it. We've got the commutativity of a multiplication. Now let's check the associativity. Okay, so for associativity, we need to prove that for all natural numbers L, M, and N, L times M, N is equal to L, M times N. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Well, just like all of the others, we're going to do induction on N. So let's start with the case when N is equal to zero, which follows really quickly. Observe that L times M times zero is the same thing as L times zero because m times zero is zero. But then that's the same thing as zero, which in turn is the same thing as L times m times zero as needed. Okay, so now let's make our induction hypothesis. So let's suppose for some k bigger than or equal to zero, we have L m times k is equal to L times m k. So I'm writing the associative rule in the opposite order as I have right here, but obviously that's the same. And now let's note that the following calculation will finish it off. So let's look at l m times k plus 1. But observe that that's the same thing as l m times the successor of k, with which we can use this definition over here. So that'll be LM times K plus LM. Now, what will we want to do from here? Well, now let's apply our induction hypothesis to write this as L times MK plus L times M times 1, where I kind of beefed up that second term. But now I can use my distributive rule to bring the L out. And it's this companion distributive rule, which we didn't prove. So taking that L out, we'll have M times K plus M times one. And then, well, we're going to take the M out of that inside. Or maybe we could equivalently use this rule right here, but let's maybe do it this way. So that'll leave us with L times M times K plus one. But that's exactly where we needed to end up in order to finish this thing off. So I've got the video on the screen right now where we look at Peano axioms and how you really define addition. So it's like the addition version of this video. So check that out.